Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for December 30th, 2020 to order. The time is now 7.03 p.m. The first item on the agenda is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. However, with it being telepresence in this nature, we, we tend to omit that for just ease of uh, ease of use on our part. Um, we are still doing these meetings via Zoom because of the COVID-19 situation, Governor Wolf's stay-at-home orders, uh, and the fact that uh, with social distancing, we, we can't really have people in the building. Um, so, uh, Jim, I don't know if you got a chance to look them over, but Irene, did you get a chance to look over the, the minutes for the November Board of Supervisor meeting? I did not. I had a little bit of a camera. Okay. Okay. I apologize. That's okay. So seeing as I think I'm probably the only one that's read them over, we should, uh, and, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong in this, uh, since we won't be able to pass the vote on that, we can just push it until next month's meeting or we next. Could, yes, we can table that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll table the approval of the November meeting minutes until next month's meetings. Um, the workshop meeting minutes from December 26th are not finished yet. So we're also gonna to need to table that as well. Uh, however, I will make a motion to approve the payment of the bills for December because I have gotten a chance to look those over. Second. Thank you, Jim. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item on the agenda is public comments. Uh, Sue, have you received any public comments by email or phone? There were none for today and there were none on Saturday either. Okay, very good. Okay, first item for discussion is the emergency declaration. Uh, this was made back at the March meeting uh, with the provision to extend for a period lasting until further action by the Board of Supervisors. This was signed by April 1st. And uh, as of November 24th, November, excuse me, Governor Wolf extended the COVID-19 emergency order another 90 days. Um, I think we should continue as we have in prior months to leave this in place until such a time as we feel that the current situation with COVID has cleared enough where we no longer need it. Agreed. Okay. Next is to adopt the 2021 budget. Uh, this was discussed and accepted at the November 19th Board of Supervisors meeting subsequently then advertised in the Reading Eagle and open for inspection. No requests to inspect the budget were made and a motion was made at the workshop meeting to adopt the budget. Uh, this was largely done so that we would be able to get the real estate tax and streetlight rates out in time to be able to have them printed on the tax bills, which had a due date of tomorrow. So if we had the meeting tonight, we would have been hard pressed to get that out in time. So. Uh, I don't think we have any other items on that particular point of it because that's well done and, and dusted. We have a good solid budget for next year. And the adoption of the 2021 real estate, uh, real estate tax and streetlight tax rates uh, has already been made. The real estate tax is set at two mils. Streetlight tax is at $0.65, so 65 cents per front footage. And the workshop uh, also had the motion to adopt that through resolution 2020-9. That's a millage as far as the real estate tax has not increased. Correct. Just let the residents know, anyone watching this at a later time. Yep, and say so it's the same tax rate as the year prior. We have not increased or decreased the taxes. Um, street light is for for the, the purposes of clarity, it's still undercutting the account a little bit. We're trying to, to take down a balance that we have or uh, a higher than normal balance in the street light fund because of uh, the recent switch to LED lights in a couple of years prior has saved us a, a considerable amount of money on an, on an annual basis. Okay. The County of Berks municipal tax sheets. So we share the printing costs with that. The as I mentioned earlier, the tax sheets are due no later than tomorrow, December 31st, 2020, uh, which is why we went through the process of adopting everything at the workshop meeting rather than tonight's meeting. Um, we did receive a complaint from 93 Main Street. Craft Codes was notified, went out and reviewed. There's, as far as I understand, no additional action needing to be taken at our time as a board. 
they are continuing to look at it and we'll be talking to the homeowners, both the, the individual who lodged the complaint as well as the homeowner of the property in question to see if there's uh, anything that needs to be done additionally. There were no signs of issues when Kraft went out and looked at it, but they'll continue to monitor. Next up on the agenda is the damaged storm grate on Main Street. This was near Reed's Church. Uh, we did receive two quotes uh, to replace that. And uh, at the workshop meeting, we actually made a motion to purchase the steel bike grate, which was the, the cheaper of the two. And we all kind of felt was the, the nicer. It actually had the, the crisscross in the, the grating rather than just the, the big open slats. So we'll make sure that that is moving along and gets delivered as soon as possible. That way we can get that installed on Main Street. Uh, in similar fashion, the culvert at Sheridan Road at Gerald Hoover's farm, uh, 540 Sheridan Road, there's a hole which is getting bigger. We had reached out to McCarthy Engineering and they sent somebody out to take a look at it. The recommendation is to close the one lane at that area and force uh, traffic to funnel in a, a one lane fashion. The plan was sent over and we approved it. Uh, Jim McCarthy did confirm that we can move the no truck traffic signs to closer to the intersections, the feeder intersections for that stretch of road so that we don't have people trying to go and have to do a three-pointer. So the next step would be to get the needed signs ordered and I'll get the road crew to move out some of the Jersey blocks that we have so that we don't have to rely on saw horses or cones or anything like that to close the road down since people, as we, we know historically, tend to just move them out of the way and drive over it anyway. Uh, Jim or Irene, any questions there in on the the choke point for that road? No. Okay. What I'd like to do as a next step would be authorize McCarthy Engineering to go out and review what it would take to fix that particular culvert mm -hmm. so that we either have a plan for our road crew if it's something that we can do or have a packet in place that we could apply for the dirt and low volume gravel road. So I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize McCarthy Engineering to assess and design a fix for col the culvert at Sheridan Road. Um, Irene, I saw your mouth move, but I didn't hear anything. You may be muted. Seconds. Thank you. Roll call, Peter. <clears throat> Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next on the agenda is the road projects for 2021. The packet that we have together is complete minus a, a little bit of additional work around overlaying some bad spots that we have. I need to finalize getting all the measurements in. Uh, it's going to be a, a good sunny day and the ability to go out and, and walk with a, a measuring wheel. But we'll have that together hopefully before earlier part of January. That way we can get it out on Pedbin as soon as possible. Next up on the agenda is the Western Berks Planning Commission. The November 17th, 2020 meeting was canceled. Heidelberg Township submitted an amendment and the next hearing is scheduled for January 21st at 7 p.m. at the Robazonia Borough Hall. We will need to have a, a quorum, which would be two out of the three of us bare minimum uh, from each municipality in order for that vote to go through successfully. So if you've not already marked it on your calendars, please do so. I will. I will be there one way or the other. And uh, we need to have, like I said, at least one of the two of you, ideally both, but uh, one of the two of you there as well. Um, Andy, I did see there was uh, an email going around about something with the like junk vehicle ordinance from like North Heidelberg. <clears throat> that was, um, well, Heidelberg actually proposed the amendment about changing the junk vehicle section of the ordinance, which deals with how many junk vehicles can be on a property that's considered an auto repair garage or an auto service station. So right now the, the ordinance says no more than six junk vehicles, which are basically defined as cars that are out of commission, mm -hmm. not op operable. Um, North Heidelberg said, we don't want to change it. We don't care what Heidelberg does, but we, we would prefer it not to change. In our okay. town. What is it currently? Is it currently six or were they changing it to six? It's currently six. I didn't tell you what they want to change it to. They're, they want to change it to two. Oh, wow. I think Heidelberg had 
has an issue, at least one property. I think Rob is only has an issue with a property too. So they're both in favor of limiting it to two, but North Heidelberg came back and said, no, we don't, we don't want to change it. Okay. I, so, and that's, I spe we'll, that's specific. Sorry to cut whoever was uh, starting to talk there. That's specific to car lots and stuff, correct? That's not. Right. Okay. It's specific to auto repair garage facilities or auto service stations. So that would, that would potentially only impact, honestly, maybe th three, if I'm thinking of that off the top of my head correctly, three properties within Marion Township that are actual garages, like automotive repair places. And I don't, I don't think any of them have problems with junk vehicles. I'm just trying to assess what the, what the impact would be if we went in with the two or the six. Is that the way, the way it's going through right now? Are they doing it for the group or is it just going to be for Heidelberg? Well, it was, uh, it was the way it was proposed. It was not limited to, to Heidelberg. It wasn't limited at all. It was a, being considered for everybody involved and North Heidelberg has just said, we don't, we don't want it. So it will be limited to solely Heidelberg or, uh, you know, Robinsonia as well. If Wilmersdorf comes back and says we, we're good with how it is, then it would only be applicable to, to two of the four. Okay. So it, we're kind of in a, in a tough spot because we're not officially a member yet, but I think our opinion would would matter here. So if you don't want to change it, um, we should let them know. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm personally in favor of leaving it as is the old way is perfectly fine. And the reason I say that is if you have a garage, like a used car lot, you could have a, a potential situation, depending on what, what you're moving through, you could have a, a fair number of cars that are, are being worked on or fixed or whatever the situation is. Not, not everybody is going to be dealing in, in new or really higher end cars. So that could be a limiting factor for, for a business in our area. So if we don't have to do anything with it, we won't touch it. We'll leave it as is. But I was curious just on the kind of the, the tone of those emails, if it was, this is being changed and we need to be aware of it, or this is something that's going to be up for discussion or really what the, the impact behind that was. Yeah. And then, you know, junk vehicles are, are limited. If you look at the definition in the zoning ordinance, so it includes those vehicles that cannot be moved under their own power um, cannot be towed in regards to a trailer designed to tow a vehicle, has been demolished beyond repair, has been separated from its axles, engine, body, or chassis. Okay, so there's, there's probably no situations that would come up because even if you had like a transmission out of a car on a car lot, you'd still be able to tow it. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay, okay. So I think it's a pretty limited situation. It's not just you know, cars like you would think sitting on a, on a lot, but yeah, yeah, these are, these are very messed up vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That makes me feel a little better about it. Um, Irene, Jim, what are your, your thoughts on that? I, I don't, honestly don't think we have to do anything at this point. It's fine. Honestly, in my opinion, either way. I think North Heidelberg has a couple spots that are basically junkyards. Okay. And then, then that makes sense why they'd want to do that then. Yeah. I don't think they want to, they want to mess with them. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, I won't, ha I won't put any further worry into that. We'll continue on at the, the January 21st meeting and hopefully we'll, we actually have it this time around and we can get that approved. I'll be, I, I'll be there too. I think I have to somewhat run that circus. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll at least have a lot of smiling, familiar faces there during the circus. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. Next up on the agenda is the approval of the CPA auditor advertisement. Uh, we had previously appointed uh, Aikens Accounting to be the uh, auditing firm for next year, or actually the next subsequent couple of years. And based on code, we actually need to advertise this in the newspaper. So we actually advertise that on December 3rd, and uh, we'll be appointing them based on the prior actions that we did at the January 4th reorganization meeting. That, from what Andy had said, brings us into compliance from a legal standpoint with everything we need to do about appointing that particular professional service. Yes. Okay. 
Do you need a motion to ratify the advertisement? Because that was not included in the original motion. Please. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably better to do that one way or the other. So I'll make a motion to rat ratify the advertisement of the uh, accounting service on December 3rd, 2020 in the Reading Eagle. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you for the reminder on that, Sue. I completely forgot that we did that out of cycle. Well, I actually looked through my notes from the workshop and was like, oh darn, we didn't do that. <laughs> okay. Next up is the Bethian, excuse me, Bethel Marion Tulpahocken Open Space Final Payment Plan for the your open spaces. Uh, we did make the resolution to submit the final paperwork. That was 2020 10, and it was carried through a motion at the workshop meeting on the 26th of December. Uh, now that we have that open space plan, that is something that uh, some of the charitable organizations in our community, like the MTCA, can now leverage to get uh, better chances at funding. For certain things as well as for certain things that the township may want to do so now that that's done and in place it is a, another tool in the toolbox that we have for certain things okay. next up is the website uh, we have gradually been submitting content to civic cms uh, the last step in order to get the the website kind of online and up and running is to do some training some administrator training for myself irene sue and jim uh, largely been me as a limiting factor. My schedule's been a little chaotic as of late. So I've been trying to get some time with Lisa from Civic CMS lined up uh, either this week or next week at some point during an afternoon or an evening so that we can get that finalized and get the website out and online to the public. So I'll keep you guys in the loop. You're CC'd on any of the emails that I, I send their direction. And as soon as I have anything from them in terms of when we should be expecting to do that i'll make sure it fits in everybody's schedules and we'll go from there okay. okay next item on the agenda is the old furnace this was successfully disconnected by essig plumbing on december the 15th so the old system is no longer connected to power water or fuel and we can begin take removing it anytime we'd like to i'm thinking probably in the spring would be the best time where we can have the guys from the road crew or anybody else uh, go in and uh, obviously some of the pipes that, that are questionably asbestos, maybe not touching those, but any of the other radiator pipes that go through like the meeting rooms or the office or anything like that, we can start removing them. Okay. The garage lights, I did half of them a couple of weeks ago with Butch and uh, we'll hopefully be doing the remaining ones sometime throughout the remainder of this week with Butch. The big focus is going to be getting lights in the greater side that the small like supplementary garage that we have off of the, the one side of the building simply because it is so incredibly dark in there. Um, so I'll keep you guys in the loop Irene if you're not if you're not working you can certainly uh, use an extra set of hands steadying a ladder or, or setting up lights before they go up. Um, Jim you should probably you should probably sit out on that fund based on what you have going on. Um, but uh, we'll get it done. It's actually not t super time consuming. The most time consuming aspect of that is getting up and down the ladder. So the more the more people we have to assembly line it, the easier it becomes and the quicker it goes. Mm -hmm. um, next up on the agenda is the 2021 reorganization meeting for the Board of Supervisors. This has been set for Monday, January 4th. 2021 at 7 p.m. We will be holding that on Zoom in the same fashion that we've been holding these meetings. The auditor's meeting has been set for Tuesday, January 5th, 2021 at 7 p.m. That will be held in the municipal building and we will be also streaming it out on Zoom in the same way that we have done these meetings. So Sue, I will be there as well to get everything set up, the laptop queued up and all that fun stuff. And then I'll, I'll probably just hang out in the office with you while they're they're doing their thing. Okay. Okay. For the reorganizational meeting, we have a number of appointments that are going to be vacant and need to be reappointed. The first one is for the planning commission. Uh, Ryan Allgaier's term is expiring. He is interested in serving another term. Franklin Troutman is also on the planning commission. 
and uh, his term will be expiring. He is interested in serving another term. Charles Zeckman Jr. for the hearing board, zoning hearing board uh, will not be interested in serving another term. So we will have a, a vacancy that we would need to potentially appoint someone in that, that, that particular role. Uh, in the event that we do not have a, a suitable candidate, we can leave it blank for the time being. But based on the importance of the zoning hearing board, it would be in our best interest to try to find someone who has a, an interest and an understanding in our zoning to fill that position. David Sadison, also for zoning hearing, will be expiring, but he is interested in serving another term. And Nancy Carrington, who is our, our current vacancy board chairman, is interested in continuing to serve in that position. Don't know if we have anything additional that we need to touch on with that. I don't believe so. It's going to be pretty straightforward with the exception of that zoning hearing position. Uh, I've not been able to find anybody that would have an interest and in an expertise in that area. Um, Jim, if you know anybody in the Stonecroft area that would have an interest therein, please let them know that there's a, a need and an opening. Uh, likewise, Irene, if you know anybody in, in your social circles that would be interested and capable, please tell them to, to, to contact us. Next on the agenda is the PSATS 100th Annual Education Conference and Exhibit Show. This is scheduled to be held April 18th through the 21st at the Hershey Lodge. Registration opens January 12th and can be done online. Uh, the cost is paid by the township. It's $160 online or $185 by mail. We made a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize the attendance of supervisors, secretary, treasurer, and road crew. Whoever is interested may attend and we would pay the registration cost and the mileage. Um, based around just my general work schedule and some of the personal concerns that I have with COVID, I don't plan on going. Um, I don't know if anybody else is, but at least the, the option is there if any of the road crew or Sue or anybody else would like to go. Okay. Next on the agenda is the 2021 fee schedules for professional services. We have received uh, updated items from Kraft, McCarthy Engineering, uh, Attorney Andy George, Attorney uh, Keith Mooney, and Gary Erb. Uh, we will need to adopt these fees by resolution at the January 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. And uh, we would uh, obviously need to discuss who we're going to be appointing at the, the reorganizational meeting. Um, in terms of SEOs, we have received several solicitation letters, uh, one from Alan Madera from in Berks Envirotech, another from Jeremy Bentz at JB Environmental Services, LLC, another from Acela Architects and Engineers, and another from Wayne Bowen, uh, who has offered to serve uh, on behalf of Gary Erb if we appointed Gary Erb again until Gary is able to return to his duties as an SEO. One of the things that I'm going to be putting together in the next couple of days in advance of the reorganizational meeting is a side-by-side -side comparison of all the, the SEO rates that we did receive so we can make a direct comp cost comparison at the very least between each uh, interested party for the SEO role. So in, in their loose forms, they're in your email. Sue was kind enough to send them out, so please give them a look over in advance of what I put together for our, our review, uh, but we should give some serious thought into consideration as to who will be the SEO for 2021 and, and forward. Next on the agenda is donation requests. We have received requests from Berks County Conservation District, the Conrad Weiser High School Class of 2021 Graduation Party, Crime Alert Berks County, and the Womelsdorf Community Library. In Previous years, we have donated to the Berks County Conservation District, Berks County Library, Berks Nature, which was formerly the Berks Conservancy, the Center for Excellence in Local Government at Albright College, Conrad Weiser Area School District Minithon, Conrad Weiser High School Class of 2019 Graduating Party, Crime Alert Berks County, and the Wommelsdorf Community Library. Based on a little bit of discussion that we had uh, at the workshop meeting on Saturday, we're going to switch it up a little bit and also uh, reallocate some money to make a donation to the Helping Harvest, which is the Greater Berks Food Bank. So the proposed 21, uh, 2021 donations would be Berks County Con Conservation District of a 
total of $700. Berks County Library for $100. Berks Nature for $200. Center for Excellence in Local Government at Albright College, $50. Conrad Weiser Area School District Minithon, $50. Crime Alert Berks County, $100. Womelsdorf Community Library, $200. And Helping Harvest, $100. I'm trying to remember, do we need to do that tonight or can we do that potentially at the reorganizational meeting? You can, you can do that tonight. That's why okay. I have it on the agenda. Okay. Irene, Jim, do you have any additional thoughts behind the donation amounts? We have to keep to budget, which was uh, the $1,500. But we can, we can certainly move things around if you feel that one should have more or less based on what we've already put forth here. I thought we were going to do 150 to helping harvest because of the uh, more likely not having a graduation party for the seniors. Unless my math is wrong, we dropped two $50 things. One of them was the class, the graduating class, which was $50. And we took $50 off of the Burke's nature. That was previously 250. We reduced that to 200 and remove the graduating class. So unless we want to get rid of the Conrad Weiser area mini-thon $50 donation. I'm fine with that. Okay, you say otherwise we'd be $50 over budget. Yes, yeah. Jim, are you okay with that? Fine, yes sir. Okay. So I'll, I'll read that back for the purposes of the record. The 2021 proposal for donations is the Berks County Conservation District of a, a total of $700, Berks County Library for $100, Berks Nature for $200, Center for Excellence in Local Government at Albright College, $50, Crime Alert Berks County, $100, Wilmersdorf Community Library, $200, Helping Harvest, $150. I'll make a motion to approve those as the donations for 2021. Second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next up on the agenda, we have received a waiver request for building permit fees from the Marion Fire Company. They are building a meeting room and office inside of the engine house. Uh, we discussed a little bit at the Saturday workshop meeting. We'd be willing to, to entertain the idea of waiving the, the townships component of the fees. However, there is a component that goes to craft as the services that they render. It's my suggestion. What we had talked about on, on Saturday was to have them reach out with a, a letter requesting that craft do, donate or waive the fees as a donation to the fire company with them being a, not-for-profit or charity sort of situation that they'd have a, a good viable reason or ability to do so rather than putting the the expectation on us to foot the bill because the the costs still have to be paid somewhere by somebody um and i know sue you said somebody from the fire company was in and you kind of relayed that same sort of mervin, mervin was in and i did tell him that um if they wanted we were having a meeting tonight and i should have that letter in my hands before today I okay. did not get it. Okay. Oh, Irene, I know what your thoughts are because you were at the, the workshop meeting. Jim, do you have any additional thoughts therein on that? No, that's fine. Okay. So I don't know if we have to do much more with that. It, we, I guess, are in a holding pattern until they, they reach out to us because uh, I'm kind of of the opinion that we shouldn't be waiving it outright because we'd be putting the burden on whatever the, the cost of the improvements is in terms of permits on the township. But I'd just be uh, concerned if we start doing that and everyone else is going to come to us with some good legit reason. So I'd rather not. Yeah, we do. We do a, a bunch of other stuff for the, the fire company specifically, like the workman's comp and other things like that. But I agree it is a bit of a, a Pandora's box. People will, will find legitimate reasons and then if we've if we set the precedent there then we have to try to be consistent going forward 
Okay, so we'll just we'll hold off on that one and wait until we see what more of the situation is. The last item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, I had previously crafted a memo uh, to McCarthy Engineering to pass over to the DEP. I have not heard back yet, but uh, based on the conversation that we had earlier part of 2020 that the DEP is still interested and willing to entertain revisions to the plan, uh, much to the point that they've actually offered to do a preliminary review, which is something they've not done for a very, very long time for any municipalities. So we're just waiting essentially to hear back. It's been strange because of COVID. I know they do a lot of stuff with Skype meetings, but uh, they don't like to do that sort of thing necessarily. So we may be in kind of a holding pattern until the opportunity presents itself to meet in person, or if there's a situation where the, the stars align and we're able to, to get something together to meet with them on Skype. Um, the only other additional thing around the Act 537 is the uh, letter that we want to send about the on-lot management ordinance uh, and the inclusion of the notes around the joint zoning. Uh, got that most of the way crafted. I sent out a very rough draft of some things that I had added to it. I did complete the maps and the visuals and things like that. So we just have to finish the, the hello, welcome cover page essentially and uh, start printing out envelopes. I did complete the mail merge earlier this afternoon. So all the, the unique property addresses and owners are in a, in a database that we can push out and, and print envelopes. So that's ready to go. We just need the, the final bit on the letter and then we can uh, more than likely put the group of us, including Dan to work on, on licking and sticking envelopes. Blue stick. Blue stick. <laughs> that's, that's probably the smarter way of doing it. Um, that's the, the final item on the agenda. So we'll go into the, the supervisor's comments. Um, I only have, actually I have two. Um, the first one to be, Jim, if you can get a chance to look over the SWIF insurance for the fire company, there was an email that Sue sent out and there's some questions about insurable interest there that uh, I think we need the, the insurance expertise that you bring to the table around that. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, the only other thing is we have two people that are potentially interested in being snowplow drivers, both of which have CDLs. Uh, the first one is Travis Oberholzer. I actually did get a chance to speak to Travis. He's interested in helping out on a kind of an as needed basis. Um, largely if there's an emergency, if we have snowfall like we did the other, other week, um, he'd be willing to go out and do a couple of hours of plowing here and there. Um, so I'll make a motion to add Travis Oberholzer to the road crew. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. The other person I have not gotten a chance to get connected to, it's David Patrick. He also has a CDL and uh, had voiced uh, an interest to Sue through the course of other conversation. So uh, I want to touch base with him and make sure that he fully understands the ins and outs and, and see what his uh, commitment would be, whether it's uh, when we, we need snow plowing or if there's other situations where he'd be interested in helping out certain other times of the year. But uh, he's one that we should keep on the agenda and hopefully get added to the road crew in, in January as well. The more people that we have available, the less challenging it is to get people lined up in the event of snowfall. Uh, we don't have to, to leverage like poor Leon or, or Butch Quite, quite as much as we do currently. Um, I think that's... By the, that's way, uh, by the way, a big thank you to Butch. I understand that he slept at the garage the night before that snowfall because he was concerned about getting, getting to the truck. Uh, he is a, he's well, quite a gentleman. Yes, he's a, a great benefit to the road crew. And I think it was actually the night of that he got out there, did some plowing, and was concerned that he wasn't going to be able to make it home. So he just slept in the truck until he could go back out on the on the plow again. So good man. yeah, that's what I told him. I was like, you should have said something. I would have driven up some like hot cocoa or a blanket or something. And he was like, no, no, no. I had my jacket. I was fine. It's like, thanks. You're, <laughs> you're, you're dedicated. Thank you. Um, in terms of comments, that's all I had. Irene, do you have anything additional? Yeah, nothing. Okay. Jim. Nothing for me. Okay. Andy. Happy new year. Happy New Year. On that Happy note, thank New you everyone for, for being a part of 2020. It was a 
very strange year this year. But uh, I think we all navigated it as, as well as possibly could be. I think every single person here managed to avoid getting COVID. So well done. Keep up the good work in 2021. And uh, we'll continue to, to really kind of take every day as they come in terms of how we, how we approach certain things. And we'll, we'll continue to start chip. I shouldn't say start, but we'll continue to chip away at certain weird or wrong things that we've unearthed and uh, really just make the system work better at every opportunity. Yeah. Sue, do you have any comments? Um, just the um, complaint, I guess you call it, I got about Eagle Disposal and the fact that they're throwing the gentleman's trash cans away. Um, I think I sent the guy an email. I, I saw the email. I didn't get a chance to read it. Did they do it again? No. Okay. No, but he keeps, so what he did was... Um, they threw two, they threw one trash can away. He went and bought another one. They threw that one away. He went and bought another one. Um, and he subtracted the amount for the both trash cans off of his trash bill. Now he keeps getting a bill for that lesser amount. Um, and he's upset about that. He feels that he should be reimbursed for that in some way. I gotta uh, say, I understand his frustration, and I agree, but unfortunately, that's going to be between him and Eagle. Okay. He did say that he called and actually asked to speak to, like, a supervisor. Got nowhere. Okay. So he, uh, he, he's throwing this on the supervisors saying, you need to do something about this. I just said I notify Eagle. I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other than we leaning... notify Eagle that they should return his phone call. That would be nice. Yeah, I was gonna say other than leaning on him a little bit. I don't know if there's any. Is there anything legally that we can do, Andy? Yeah. I don't, uh, think, legally, I don't, I don't think the contract covers that. Yeah, I mean, we can we could look, but I, what I would do, Sue, is is email or maybe directly from Peter, email that Andrew uh, is a Andrew Warrens. Um, no, that was the re Republic guy. This is Andrew Casey. Andrew Casey. Mm -hmm. uh, he's I would, the salesperson. Yeah, but I, I would, I would. He's he's our representative, I guess. That, right. You know, mm -hmm. contact person that has the authority to do something about that. So, yeah, I I would contact him and I'd put okay. it in writing. Just tell okay. him what the situation is. I mean, that's for them to to reimburse a guy for taking his trash can. That's that should be nothing. That should be a no-brainer for them. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So, Sue, I'll give you a call to make sure I have the the full ins and outs of the situation since you've had your, your finger more on the pulse of this. And I will I will craft an email to Andrew Casey saying, hey, please make this right. Uh, the poor guy has had his trash cans thrown away twice now. Um, it's going to hopefully not be a problem because of the new cans that Eagle supplied, but the damage is already done. Right. right. So I'll, we'll do whatever we can, but... Um, Beyond that, I'm not sure if there's much more that we can forcibly exert, but we can certainly give it the good college try. Okay. Good enough. Okay. And that was all I had. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 7.41 p.m. Thank you, Peter. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. We got to... Is, is there a second? Is there a second? Is there a second to that motion? Yeah. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, now. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy stay New safe, Year. stay healthy, and we'll see you at the, the reorganizational meeting. Happy Do better, Jim. Happy New Year. Bye. -bye.